And so we are back. Hello everyone, it's time for a Sunday line battle. And on this wonderfully flat desert expanse, it is the 33rd Sunday line battle. So, on the French side, we have the 33rd of the LKOP and the 87th foot. And on the opposing side, we have the 54E, the 91st, the 1st KGL. And that's pretty much it. And sides are not too bad. Only seven difference. So, and a happy birthday to Skull. So, for those of you who, um, you know, want to be, uh, celebrate his birthday, then feel free to shoot at him. So, there's Colonel James Stewart from the 91st, and also Alexander Munro from the 91st. And there, of course, is our guardian angel, the two-dimensional bird. So, from the two-dimensional bird's lofty viewpoint, we watch... Now, the thing is, obviously, because there's not a lot of hills, it's very hard to, dis uh, to disguise your movements, as you can see. So this is going to be like watching ants. But we'll have to see how things go. And yeah, I think yeah, I think an attack from space might be a possibility. So there won't be a lot of cover available. This is going to be a very stand up and shoot at the enemy style fight. So we just have to see who gets advantage of numbers. Now the trouble is here, these two 91st lines could potentially run into each other. As any minute now, it's all going to kick off. So they need to turn their line. Oh, 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 no, they've gone in for the charge. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. It's gone pear-shaped already. And my God, look at the team kills. The 87th foot with some nice team kills in there. So you can see the 33rd moving in. And over here on one side is, of course, Rip Sakara. Oh my god, there's more coming. As they charge into the battle. As it becomes a mass melee ensuing battle. You've still got the 33rd staying over there, shooting at some of the Brits as they come through. So you can see huge amounts of stabby goings on. As we're looking at poor old Moyes. There's the LKOP. Making their way in. And you can see... So we've got numbers. 36, 34. It's still pretty even. So you can see here... The first KGL doing a good job of defending themselves. As is Angus McGregor from the 91st. The commanding officer has survived. Colonel James Stewart of the 91st. Which is a good thing. But... It's 24 and 24. Holy crap, it's really, really equal. This is very impressive by the guys here. Absolutely superb. As you can see, there seems to be a slight oversupply in weapons and cartridges for reasons we cannot understand. So, as you can see, 19 and 19 again. And Rips, Ripsy gets team kill. Poor Ripsy. Oh dear. Now France are in trouble. They're down less numbers. Let's see what's going on. And there we go. There goes another. And a nice team kill. James Stewart being team killed. <laughs> By the first KGL. Dear oh dear. Four Frenchmen left standing against 14. Oh poor old Finn chap didn't stand a chance. And there we go. So yeah that was a very 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 nasty battle. And we move on <laughs> to the next round. So the first round was different, I think we can say. But we shall have to see what they decide to do this time. Now, whether or not they're going to do actually, rather than melee, they might do a stand-up fight. We'll have to wait and see. Now, there's the English on the right. And here are the French on the left, lining up. Now, they could go possibly for a river crossing, maybe. Maybe move over. They're all moving to a different flank on this occasion. Well, all except this gentleman, who appears to be... Oh, dear. 91st invite Bilbo Swaggins has just stabbed himself in the foot. 
So he's now have to left the front line and will return to home and obviously much shame and opprobrium as there's Vasily getting on to the edge of the line of the 33rd. There's Mr. Stefan, of course, Major Mr. Stefan, no less. You see his, his hat doesn't appear on straight. Look at that. Can't even put his bloody hat on straight. Typical. So now they need to find out what's going to happen because the Brits are going to be way the hell over here. Now. Correction, they'll be way the hell over there. So now you can see what happened is the Brits crossed the river and are now looking like they're trying to pin in the French by a outflanking manoeuvre. So you can see, oh, look at all that musket fire. Goodness me, that's fantastic. This guy's not quite getting the range yet. They're getting closer. You can see the bullets still spitting out the sand as these guys continue to get closer and closer with their range. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Look at that, isn't that beautiful? The fusillade from these guys. Bullets bouncing towards them through the sand. And Peanut Donkey has managed to shoot himself in the head. So we don't even want to know how that happened, but you know, needless to say, Peanut Donkey is no longer on the front line. So, let's see, as we're now looking at Schneider moving out with his troops, and, of course, Alexander Munro. Philan McFarlane. And Colonel John Sinclair. Along with Lister Bashnell. And Neil McLean. And Ensign, no less. So, look at this line. Isn't it beautiful? Fine bonny Scotsman. And, of course, Colonel James Stewart. The bonniest of the Scotsmen. Albeit with no nose. So... This is more of a stand-up fight, but it's not as close as it was previous round. To be honest, you'd be hard-pressed to get it any closer. That was bayonets at dawn type situation. However, you can now see that the English forces, or the British, have decided to split off some of their number. They've got some of them going over to one side, and some going on, no doubt, what is now flanking manoeuvre, onto the French. So... Down here, you have the stalwart gentleman from the 1st KGL. Rar indeed. And obviously, the 54E Fusiliers. Under the command, of course, of the dashing Colonel Lord John. And there's the 54E Fusiliers. Now, you notice that there's not a lot of dead people right now. So... They haven't managed to actually get the range yet. Now, obviously, the only people who are... Oh, there we go. The 54E with their first kill. <laughs> but it's not a team kill. So, somebody found the right range. As you can see, they also found this fella. Oh, and there we go. The 54E with a lovely headshot onto poor old Riyad Rivers. So, there we go. More fire coming in from the 91st now. Doing a little bit of more damage. There we go. You see, that's exactly what I suspected they'd try and do. They've now moved in closer onto the French forces. Getting into an outflanking position. There we go. There's poor old recruit TC taken down as the retreat begins. Corporal Robert Clive. Clive of India, no doubt, or related to him. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Who are these fine fellows? It is, of course, the 91st. With Fillion and Munro. And Colonel John Sinclair. And cannon fodder, after getting a lovely head, uh, headshot on one of the French enemy, then succumbs to a headshot himself, sadly. So, Colonel James Stewart. Moving in. With his section of the 91st. Look at these. Fantastic. Fantastic. With two officers at the rear. So. You've got 
British forces over on the far right hand side. Now trying to hit. Oh, Ripsy gets taken out. <laughs> I don't know why they keep saying sorry every time they shoot somebody. So. Maybe they're just being polite. So we see over here the 87th foot and the 33rd. Now moving out. Crossing the river. While under fire, there we go, Private Kling gets taken out. Who are these fine fellows? There's 33rd in there as well. Under Soldat, another player. Oh, more fire coming in. There we go, that's the run in between the 91st and the 87th foot over there. And as you can see, stabby goodness is occurring. There's Prox trying to defend himself against a couple of evil Frenchmen. They're trying to do him no good. Down goes Private Cameron from the 33rd. And these two guys trying to defend themselves. HSM Bean fighting for his life. Also, I Lettuce, Lance Corporal of Horse normally. But unfortunately, Private Welsh is in there doing some damage as well. So, now you can see, oh, a lovely team kill. And now you can see the French forces with their back to the river. This is a dangerous situation for them to be in. Vasily moving out with other members of the LKOP. The 87 foot under Ensign Doyle choosing to stand and fight. Members of the 87th being cut down by withering fire from the 91st. Now they've decided to breach. Or move, I should say. The LKOP now firing back at the 91st that were engaging them. Unfortunately, bodies being left behind as now the Brits are moving. The 54E moving in closer. No doubt the 91st also moving. Yes, indeed. The 91st moving. As you can see now, the 91st and the 33rd having a massive run in on the side of the uh, river. 91st now moving up against the French reinforcements. There's Colonel Bob Malog trying to defend himself against an army of Brits. Oh, Bob Malog taking down William McFarlane. Now he's trying to defend himself, but Bob Malog didn't stand a chance against sheer weight of numbers. And who's this person here? Private Tain. Is about to get the surprise of his life, or bayonet-related surprise. A very pointed surprise. Ah, indeed. Oh, nice stab, sir. So now he's trying to defend himself against two Scotsmen, which is never an easy thing to do. Nice turn and stab there. And a nice killer to David Anderson. Tane doing his best. Nice block. Oh, very... Oh, but then taken down by William Cooper. And the 54E. Whoops-a-daisy. King Leonidas managing to kill the enemy. And there we go, boys and girls. The Brits have won the second round. And we move on to the third. And we return for the third round now. Here is the LKOP with Lieutenant McCourtney. Now, who's this fellow? Corp Handy. So, let's see. Oh, fire has begun. Courtesy of the 87th and the 33rd. Look at these fellows. Up against the far corner of the map. And it looks to be a fire in advance situation. Roger! 
So, 33rd are moving up. The 87th moving to their right. Major Stefan in command of this section. Oh, fantastic. Oh, lovely shot from Chibisuki into Alexander Nevsky. So, a nice shot. And now you can see more members of the 33rd taking out 91st. Oh, look at all these. Oh, look at all this. Oh, fantastic. Bullet fire from all sides. Fantastic goings on. As now you can see members here of the 91st. With Ensign Neil McLean. And of course, Colonel James Stewart at the far end. Oh, Mr. General Gamer taken out by a nice shot from the 91st. The 54E also responding to this a long line of the 33rd. And Prince Eugen is sorry for everything. So you can see here, this is a pretty stand-up battle going on here. Look at that! I'm guessing it's that section over there. Let's see if we can find them. There we go. The first KGL and the 33rd are having a bayonet-related punch-up, as you can see. So, unfortunately for the British forces, it's not gone that well. As Poke is well and truly poked by a bayonet. And Trooper Alex finally gets cut down there. So... A section of the English forces. They are now definitely down by 10 men. And now the English forces decide to move in closer. Thirty-third. Remaining on their hill. Lord John moving in closer. They're taking a very roundabout route, almost an encircling route, we'll have to see. As you can see now, the French forces approaching, moving in closely. Oh, there we go, there we go, they broke in and they found the 33rd section. There's Gurkha, taken out, the protagonist also, and McAfee. McFy, and you can see the French here with Gay Ben running backwards, trying to defend himself against unwanted assaults. Unfortunately, was not able to stop that sword slicing through his midsection. But now you can see lots more stabby goodness occurring, and over the other side. It's time for the bayonet dozy do with the French and British forces, as you can see. Mass stabbings everywhere. Of course, the standard team kills, as you would expect. Feldsau taking down recruit Dasher. Look at this. Fantastic mass murder everywhere. Stabby goodness. And you can see here. More fire. The 87th Fusilier Fred moving in. Recruit Anthony Venison, very well done. Invitational Dutch officer over here, who is Lord John. And now you can see, let's have a look at the numbers, 41 versus 16. Oh, this is not good for the French. This is very not good for the French. Now, let's see who these guys are. It's the, uh, the KO, LKOP. Doing the best to defend against an army of Brits. So Splatterfox and Pier taken down. They always kill the musician. Oh, Invitational Sleek is finished off. As is Cannon Fodder from the 54E. Oh, multiple members of the LKOP still being taken down. You can see there. Musician the dude, poor musician the dude. And there you have it boys and girls, that has been the third round. And we shall move on, I believe, to a new map. So, we shall be right back. 
And so, it turns out that they are going to play another round on this map. As it's relatively early still. So, as three rounds have actually completed in about half an hour, which is, you know, not, not exactly unusual on this kind of bat game. So, we'll have to see. The 87th. Moving out, sort of in a line. On the right, it is the 33rd. Pyronix from the 33rd moving in. There's Ripsy. Oh, looks like the Brits are going very aggressive yet again. Oh, crikey, a blimey. Here we go, boys and girls. It's time for the bayonet dozy do. <laughs> oh, good God. Oh, bloody hell. Look at that. Oh, heavens. This is a knotty situation now for the French. Except for maybe the KOP over there. Who well, I guess it's the back them. Over there. As you can see, now see the French getting involved. The remaining members. Oh, look at this. Look at this, isn't this glorious? It's a crowd armed with bayonets. Look at this, isn't this wonderful? Oh, and James Stewart gets taken out. <laughs> yep, the French deciding to run. Which is kind of understandable. Some turning to stay out, stay and fight. Some choosing not to. Some members of the French forces staying. The 87th foot there firing into the enemy. Fusilier Soldat Wild. And down here is the LKOP. Oh. So that wild is finished off. Edward Kelly, how the hell did he avoid all those bullets? Good God. And stabbed to death as soon as he tries to come in. So you can see here a few members of the 33rd and the LKOP. And now the LKOP get jumped, quite literally, by an army of British. And as you can see, this runaway army of Scotsmen and British. Oh, they slayed them. <laughs> As Maxo turns and stabs Amos. And we move on to a map change. And so we return after a map change into this lovely rolling meadow, complete with bushes and trees and grass and flowers and lots of men armed to the bloody teeth. So, here are the British forces moving out, as you can see, from their spawn. So, Captain Schneider from the 1st KGL, moving out with his troops. And let's see what have we got over here. Invitational Sleek, who one of the few people on the server with actually a normal face. So, King Leonidas, without a beard, criminal. So let's just wait and see. As Invitational Sleek, unfortunately, has just stabbed himself through the forehead, so he will not be joining us. And we shall now move over and find out what's going on. Oh, 
Oh look, it's the 33rd. Snaking around with Mr. Bob and Log. And recruit Centaunt. Oh dear. Looks like the El Kalop or the KOP. Having a few technical problems as unfortunately Godzilla has just been slain. Um, as you can see there is the corpse of Godzilla. A bit smaller than we're used to but you know. These things happen. As there's Bob the Log. See, looking devilishly handsome this evening. As they are now engaging the British forces at this distance as Private Baron gets finished off with a nice headshot from Adam Anderson. So. Let's see. Here are the British forces. Firing back at the enemy. These fine fellows from the one KGL. There we go, engaging the enemy. And of course the 91st. As the 54E and the 91st are exchanging fire. Over here on the side hill is of course the 91st moving out closer towards the French forces with another section of Brits moving in in the middle even closer poor old new bass 13 gets taken down from the 54e and let's see if we can find out what's going on as there's more fire here There's 33rd Corporal, the protagonist. There's Soldat, Soldat, another player. And it looks like the French forces are now chasing after, oh dear, an ambush here by t -Tow And friends from the first KGL. Soldat, another player, turning to shoot back. Now they're going to be engaging the guys on the top of the hill and taking down three with the first volley. Good shooting there by the 33rd. However, over here... Is a little bit of melee dancing, so to speak. Except this time it's done with sharpened weapons, which you don't see a lot in uh, England. You know, may dance, maypole dancing, all that kind of thing. The women who dance around the maypole tend not to be armed to the teeth with guns and swords, but, you know, short knives like bayonets and things of that nature. So, Colonel Lord John there doing a good job taking down members of the 33rd. So that, oh, Boone doing a great job at the moment. Let's find out what Boone's doing. Who's that? Oh dear. There's Boone from the 54E. And then, oh, look at that. So that was poor old Bob Malog and friends. He very, came very close, Boone, to taking out, assassinating Bob Malog. So Boone with a fantastic job. And now you can see Fusilier. Yeah. Lieutenant Maxo. Trying to defend himself. Oh, nice sabre slice and into the back of the legs. Oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. And now you can see the reinforcements arrive from the 91st. Masses of fire coming in from a combination of the 91st into the KOP. My apologies. As you can see, recruit D-Day Dam being finished off. Yet more members. You can see the... Vasily working to try and take out some of the Scotsmen that are attacking him. That's a nice attack there by commanding officers with John Sinclair, Lieutenant Colonel of the 91st, finishing him off. Now, what's going on over here? A sole Frenchman defending his honour. It is Zaib from the 33rd defending himself against an army. Oh, poor Zaib, he's going to get completely and utterly raped and finally taken down by Donald Barclay. And that is the fourth round. Let's just see what happens on the next one. And so we return to the new round. Now, what do we have here? 
French people. Mr. Stefan, complete with his crooked hat. I don't know, he's got the wrong shaped head. Which is a possibility. He is from Holland. So, Private Burhan. There's another player. Fine face and a hook nose. As they you can see here, the French forces now moving up, working aggressively. There we go, the ninth, 91st, taking some fire. Bob Malog leading the 91st in, and now they've broken for the charge. This is going to be a knotty situation. Hopefully this line will be able to... Oh, no, bit of firing going on. There we go. A few members of the 33rd taken out, and it looks like the 33rd line here. Or well, the first KGL. No, nope, looks like there's garbage said. It went a bit pear shaped. As poor old Eddard Stark gets taken down. Major Munro also then gets shot. And John Sinclair at the same time. So you can see here the 91st. Also now trying to deal with the 33rd. So you can see more stabby goodness occurring. As Feld's our team kills musician the dude. Which he will not be very pleased about. Yet more French coming in. Reinforcements, but they're going to be enveloped very quickly. There's 33rd. And the 33rd. And more of the 33rd. These guys backing up as they're coming under sustained pressure from the Brits, attacking them from all directions. This is not going well for them. Look at this. This is what they're up against. A line of spikes. Oh, and there we go. A few team kills in there as well. So, who remains? Let's see what's going on over here. A little bit of stabby goodness. James Stewart taking down recruit mots. Or recruit moys. Now, who's over here? Bunch of French people are after us. Sub-Lieutenant Maxo, I presume it's Sub-Lieutenant, as James Stewart is now fighting, or at least trying to hold up the French. Oh, nice stab into Roan there, and a nice kill into James Collinson. And there we go, the final kill by Sir Colonel James Stewart, or Colonel James Stewart. And now... That is it for this evening, boys and girls. So, thank you very much for watching this line battle. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Thank you to all the teams that attended. I hope you guys had fun. And we'll see you again for another Sunday line battle. Take care.